Charlie Dimmock. Boys! The Rich Brothers. Jump. <laughs> and the Garden Rescue Team have a treat in store. Too much entertainment. They have come to the rescue of hundreds of British gardens. <laughs> now it's time to look back hey. and pick their favourites. This looks really cool. Oh, wow. 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 Look at that. Oh, fabulous. As they celebrate the very best. I don't like it. Huh? I love it. Oh. From extraordinary eco gardens. Thank you so much. <laughs> to exotic designs. Oh my gosh, no way. Gardens inspired by people. Is this the garden that you dreamed of? It is. Absolutely. <laughs> I think that's a thumbs up. And places. It's the most beautiful garden I've ever been in. Therapeutic spaces. Wow. And the most extraordinary transformations. Whoa. It is perfect. Yeah, come on. <laughs> I want it. <laughs> Welcome, Welcome to, to Garden Rescue. Rescue. Top of the plots. <laughs> Which gardens are we looking at today then, boys? Today we're going to be looking at family gardens. And actually, if you look back, we've done loads of family-focused spaces. Yeah, lots of swings, yeah. slides, climbing frames, nature projects, loads. Yeah, nice simple spaces that are safe to play. I don't know about you, lots of memories for me as a child growing up. I mean, for you two, it must have been just yesterday. Yeah, I mean, yesterday <laughs> we were climbing trees, you know, playing in the stream, yeah. chucking stones at each other. Always playing <laughs> in the garden, us. Yeah, yeah. You'll want a playtime in a minute, yeah. won't you? You want a break? Yeah. Come on, Mum. <laughs> <laughs> Do you remember that garden in Shrewsbury? The fireman Steve and his wife Roxy? Yeah. Yes. And their garden for their children. It was a, a, a packed garden, wasn't it? And they had lots of fond memories from that. Our rescues are something to be proud of, but our first Top of the Plots family garden was for Roxy and Steve, who wanted a space for their two kids and their older cousin to enjoy. Charlie's design focused on creating the ultimate magical playground with a climbing wall, raised den and swings. Here is a little door that takes you through a tunnel that leads to this section here. It's hard to imagine all that yeah. would be in our garden. It will fit, honest. <laughs> I did measure it. <laughs> it's a big garden, so it's a mammoth job for the team to get it stripped back. David's first job is to start the secret garden, making some mini hills and hollows for the kids to play in. What's perfect is there's been loads of excess turf and soil already dug up from the garden. We've got it from under the patio, we've got it from under the path here. So basically, I'm shifting it from this one big lump into hopefully about four of the mounds, creating these really fun routes through it. But it's slow work. So come back to me in about four hours when I've probably got it finished. While David's moving mountains, Harry's making a Hobbit-style door for the secret garden. This rustic door is going to create a lovely detail within the garden. And some of the best gardens don't reveal themselves all at once. Instead, they create this bit of intrigue. And that's exactly what Charlie's done. And I think that's a lovely detail. Split the garden up, create these little hidden spaces, and therefore that intrigue is always going to be there. So I've cut all these to size now. So what you're looking at is the door itself. But Charlie wants this nice rustic appearance, you know, slight, slight higgledy-piggledy. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to scribe a nice kind of characterful line around the outside to give it that nice little bit of charm. Using a jigsaw, he then cuts the curved top and child height peephole in the wood. Then I thought it would be really nice to have a little offcut like this. I'm going to saw in half and that's actually going to create the little handle. Perfect for small hands. And there's another carpentry masterclass in the back garden, where Charlie is making sure the play equipment is knocked into shape. So this bit is sort of ready to get the platform yeah, we're all on. Yeah, good. Yep. So shall I shall I help you or hinder you with the platform? You can just say help. Right. Yeah. So platform there, rail yep. there. Yep. Then, you know. Uh, Willow weaving, yep. maybe. I want to make this feel that they're in a basket. Absolutely. You know, like a crow's nest. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then we've got the sail over the top yep. so they can hide. It's a, it's a den on stilts. That's exactly what it is. 
With the mounds built for his secret garden, David is piecing together the patchwork lawn. And he's pretty pleased with his hills and valleys. So that's the last bit of turf going down on the mounds. And it's going to be such a fun playground for Ted and Betsy. Not only are they going to be able to run through using all the different paths, they're also going to be able to run up and roll down the mounds as well. And I think it's going to really conjure up that natural wonderland, but also going to inspire them to use this area in quite a creative way. And then they'll be down here, and they can get on to the whole climbing frame and up this climbing wall, which I'm going to get on now and build it. To make the climbing wall, he's using decking boards. I'm just attaching the timbers onto the frame to create the ramp. Now, I've got it at the Goldilocks angle. It's not too steep, but it's also not too shallow. It's just right, because we want Ted and Betsy to feel like they're really getting something out of it. They've got to, you know, have a nice bit of exercise up onto the timber framework. But we also need to realise they're not Marines. They are just children at the end of the day. And I decided to do two routes as well. So we've got a tricky route, and a not so tricky route. Both a little bit challenging, but it's all about increasing the dexterity of their fingers, but also their cognitive thinking. So it's a little bit of problem solving as they're wandering up, and hopefully it should be a lot of fun. The garden is really taking shape. A pergola and raised den are built and secured, and Charlie can now accessorise it with equipment to keep the little ones busy. We put in these carabiners in that we can attach swings to, but then also take them away and change them for maybe a scrabble rope or a punch bag or even hanging baskets. Were you looking at me when you said punch bag? No, sure. never. <laughs> you're, you're doing really well today. I'm going to oh. give you an A star. <laughs> Harry's ready to hang his lovingly crafted door, making a magical entrance to the secret garden. Here we are, it's the door done. I'm actually really happy with this little window, a little glimpse through into the garden beyond. Charlie, what do you think? I think it is definitely, don't tell your brother, <laughs> but the best bit of the garden. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's fab. Behind Harry's hobbit door in the secret garden, Charlie wants to create a kid-sized tunnel from plastic water piping. Costing around 50p a metre, it's cheaper than willow, which can be used for a more natural effect. Over. Oh. Watch the gate. Watch the yeah, gate. Watch the gate. Watch the gate. The garden's all about the gate. Yeah. Archways. That, one, that one's got one to be there. reasonably tall. No, not Same the black the post. No, go, go back. Into go back. the mound. Yeah, go nice. back there. Yeah, there. Harry and David are driving canes into the ground to fix the individual loops of the tunnel in place. Oh, 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 look at that. Yeah, I like it. It's okay. even got a little bit of give as well, just in so, case. So, I don't want them all at that height. I mean, maybe put Smaller one here bigger. that's a bit lower. Lower. So I don't want any higher than that. The tunnel will add a splash of colour to the garden and follow the path of the valleys David's created through the sculpted mounds. Over the play areas, fabric sails are strung up to offer some shade, should the sun ever come out and the crow's nest den is made secure. With some final touches, the team are finished. What was an unloved, bland garden has been transformed into this family-friendly, playful paradise. But what will Roxy, Steve and their children think? Oh, my... What? It doesn't look our garden anymore, does it? How do you fit all this in? That is incredible. Oh. I knew there was going to be a tunnel. Oh, did did you? you? The little ones are thrilled, but will it get the all-important seal of approval from older cousin Esme? It literally looks amazing. The kids are going to love it. We're going to love it. It's just fantastic. I love that adventurous garden and getting kids into gardening at a young age is just so important. And a great way of doing that is by getting them to grow veg. Now it can be very simple and you can make it fun for them. Now I've got sweet corn here and I'm going to be planting it in a block because it's wind pollinated. It's a lovely shelter position here, nice and sunny. And the best thing is, is actually when children pick vegetables themselves and go home and eat it. Now this grows to about three metres tall, so it's going to feel really grand and oversized, almost like Jack and the Beanstalk. Almost? 
This is much more literally like Jack and the Beanstalk. Here we've got some runner beans, and they're fantastic, because I feel like myself and children together have short attention spans. So to watch a vegetable grow vigorously up these canes will be fantastic. So in summer, they'll be able to pick some nice, crunchy, fresh beans. It's a great job, Dave. Thank you very much. Now, gardens can be wonderful, safe places for your children to run around and explore, but not everyone can be as fortunate. Andy and Fiona's garden in Southampton was quite dangerous for their little one. Since Alex came into Andy and Fiona's lives, they've realised that their garden just isn't family friendly and is too treacherous for a toddler to play in. We've probably used it a handful of times since we moved in. So really having a safe place for him to play and burn off energy is essential. With one quarter of the plot dropping by almost a metre, Charlie came up with a plan that put a play area in the ditch, accessed via easy to negotiate steps. This is his area down here. So we have a slide going down the slope and put play bark down there with a nice playhouse. The first phase of Charlie's clever transformation takes some serious elbow grease from the landscaping crew. Always start at the lowest level, which is here, and then go up. So we're going to be putting steps in up here, and we're just using sleepers. These are softwood but tantalised. You're going to get about 15, 20 years out of them quite happily. No dreaded ditch anymore. It's all nice, even steps that everybody can cope with. Meanwhile, the Rich Brothers get the fun job of building a playhouse, but being a flat pack, it isn't straightforward. Close up. They both doesn't actually match which way. Do you want the door opening inwards, yeah, or outwards? Huh? Outwards. Semi tricky. You always have flat ground when you're doing it. Should we just get this in him first? Yeah, hold, hold it up, won't it? So you need the biggest screws, mate. Four. Three. Three. Happy? Yeah, very happy. Not exactly child's play, eh, boys? Getting too old for this. <laughs> While the boys muck about, the grown-ups, Charlie and little Alex's dad, Andy, are chewing over a plan to bring a bit of fun to a neglected corner of the garden. Now, you'll probably remember on my design, there wasn't anything here. I thought it might be fun to put, like, a pedal car track running through. Oh, wow, well, yeah. Yeah? <laughs> so Alex could be on-road on the patio right, and then he can off-road yeah, yeah. through here. And then I'm thinking that we'll swing it round we're going to put something here to stop him being able to go totally down there, and it will swing round and come back onto the grass. Fantastic. So, yeah? Yeah, that's, that sounds so, absolutely amazing. The track will be at a slightly lower level than the surrounding plants, so David marks out its root in sand before digging the turf out. What do you think about that so far? Yeah, mate, lovely. It's going to be a super nice little serpentine path through, isn't, isn't it? Shouldn't it, yeah, with brown past this canthus. Yeah. Well, and then the end, nice sharp corner around. A little bit of a hairpin. Yeah. Challenging hairpin at the end. It's always a good idea when marking out paths or new borders to do this. Nice. To make sure you're happy with the shape before committing. Look at that. Perfect. It's yeah, nice, isn't it? Awesome, really cool. Give us yeah. true purpose now. It does. Even if it's raining, you can just practice the handbrake turns. <laughs> Cool, right, let's get digging out here. Yes. The Rich Brothers are giving Alex's racetrack a surface of bound gravel, but need to prepare the area first. Just digging down now to create the racetrack. And we want it to be a nice firm base so it doesn't sink in. And we don't even mind if there's a few little bumps, because that's more fun. And there's only one way to check that they've got the width of the track just right. Because he's got little legs, isn't he? Yeah, he's got well, little feet on the end of those little legs as well. Look at that, that's good width. Nice, not too sharp. Down here, let's go. <laughs> Beautiful. 
With the donkey work done, the racetrack's final touch is a layer of bound gravel. Once shoveled into place, it needs a tamp down with a vibrating plate to compact it and give it a firm surface. This finish is great for giving a more informal look and it also is cost effective at £10 per metre squared. The team are on the home straight now, but there's still a key bit of kid-friendly kit to install, the playhouse. About that, and then we need to level it up a bit. Helen, everybody out, back to work, we've got garden finish. Slide's got to go in, planning's got to be done. <laughs> oh, yeah, I was going to know who that probably was due to. <laughs> With the final details all in place and the plants dug in, the team have finished. <laughs> and what was a dangerous garden for a toddler has been transformed into a beautiful family garden, complete with its own Thriller Minute mini racetrack. But will it get the thumbs up from Andy, Fiona and Alex? OK, you can open your eyes. Wow! Oh, wow! That is oh, amazing! <laughs> Alex, look! It's just brilliant. Cool. Uh, wow, look, look at, at you! <laughs> Power. Wowee! Look Hand, at that! Hands free. Yay! <laughs> I could see you were definitely in pole position. Oh, track. you're all funny, aren't you? <laughs> see, now, straight lines have their place in a garden, but you can't be a winding path for that magical journey of, I wonder what's coming oh, up next. That's yeah, great. A lot like this garden with yeah. this beautiful path. It's lovely, isn't it? And then you get to something like that, a feature, and you go, wow, look at that. And all you need now is a little bit of inspiration to come up with a great place for the children to play or even a few grown-ups. Oh, a couple right here. Yeah. Off you go. I'm going to play for a bit. Right. So the idea is to create a sort of temporary den for children and adults to play. So a um, few bits of material are always quite handy, maybe strung up. Reminds me of that garden we did in Northampton. Very Alice in Wonderland. As Charlie sets about making a den in her tree, our next top of the plot's family garden transformation was for Sharon. She wanted an interesting space that would fire up her goddaughter Alex's imagination. Hello. Hello. <laughs> hey. So the Rich Brothers' incredible design conjured up the weird and wonderful world of Alice in Wonderland. We thought it would be perfect to give you this area where Alice can imagine she's in a fantasy wonderland. Perfect. The first job for the landscapers is to clear the garden. And with that done, Harry sets about installing an enchanting checkerboard paving. You can really change the character of a space by, just by kind of using the slabs in a different way. Just by introducing a bit of planting, it's really going to soften this space and it's going to be quite undefined. But the key is to leave nice loose soil in between the slabs. So it means when we come to planting, it makes it really easy. To add a little extra magic to the garden, Andy's carved some giant toadstool sculptures with a chainsaw. Andy, these are incredible. They look pretty good, don't they? Yeah, I mean, you really capture the essence of a wild mushroom. <laughs> so what wood is it? It's a nice piece of redwood. Yeah? Yeah, it's a perfect piece of wood. That's the hardest bit. Yeah, did you go out searching for it? He just went to the local log pile yeah. and uh, managed to buy some bits of wood. Yeah. So, uh, and did it have that natural shape as well? No. No, it was just a straight cut-off bit of wood. Yep. Oh, and I love this as well, the kind of nice little tapered edge. Yeah, cut in from the top, straight yeah. down. Leave it all one piece. I know, because it's pretty heavy. Yeah, it's pretty it's heavy, easier. but at least it'll stay together. Yeah, I love it. And, you know, this is pretty tricky to do, isn't it? I don't think everyone can do this. Yeah, you need to be, a, you know, trained in a chainsaw op yeah. operation. So how many have I got, then? You have got four. Four? Yeah. 
Not sure there's going to be much room in the garden. Oh. <sighs> it takes a while to grow on you, Dora Andy. That's a bad joke. That's a bad joke. <laughs> Whilst Charlie focuses on the planting, Harry's finishing the Alice in Wonderland checkerboard paving with a splash of green. This turf knitted with the paving really gives this lovely soft space to play. Because Harry's setting the turf flush with the level of the paving stones, a lawnmower can go straight over the top and get clean edges to the grass without any further trimming. Once you've cut your turf, it's good to push it down so the roots really do connect with the soil. And then the next thing is you need to water it for at least two weeks so it really knits in and establishes. Some of the checkerboard squares are going to offer another sensory experience, the gorgeous scent of fresh chamomile. These are the chamomile plugs and they're about 60p per plant. And we've chosen them because it's a lovely sunny spot down here and they're the perfect ground cover. They're very simple to put in. All you've got to do is push a hole in like that and then place them in. We're going to put about eight in here, and in a couple of weeks, they're going to spill over, soften the slabs, and just create a lovely little feature at the bottom of the garden. But turf and chamomile are not the only things that'll be planted in Alex's checkerboard. I think I found the perfect spot for one of Andrew's mushrooms. I'm just going to put it in the middle of the chamomile here, so over time, that will fill out, and it'll almost look like the mushrooms coming out of the ground. Charlie, what do you think? That looks great! It looks really cool. Yeah. See, I've got my own little bit of fantasy going on here. You know, Alice in Wonderland, this white rabbit running late down a hole. So this is the rabbit hole. Going to dress it with a few little spring bulbs. And this is really just a bit of fun. But that's a great thing about children being out in the garden, just messing around and having fun. What to write on the sign? Charlie's putting the finishing touches to her enchanted rabbit hole. Perfect. And the boys are adding a special something to Harry's checkered paving. Custom-made light boxes. They're pretty much just clear plastic with a lovely wooden frame. Very simple to make and I think they're going to make a massive difference in the garden at night time. Awesome, especially put them down here. For little Alex, you can move them around. And when you look down out of the house in the evening, bright lights shining. Really, really cool. And I've got a yellow one. Green. <laughs> With the light boxes in place, the team have cracked it. Sharon's garden was uninspiring, especially for her goddaughter Alex. It's now been transformed into this Alice in Wonderland inspired magical space, but will it leave Sharon and Alex spellbound? Open. Oh my god. <laughs> Look at this, Alex. Look. Yeah, come on over. Let's have a look. <gasps> Can you see? <gasps> What's in there? <laughs> you definitely fit in there. <laughs> yeah. And the mushrooms. Mushrooms. Yeah. Oh, wow. So you can sit on this one. Okay, that's the right size. Yeah. <laughs> Ta da! There you go. A bit of fun, bright and colourful, amazing what you can do with a few bits of material, somewhere to sit. But in my experience, the best things to do is to give the bits to the children themselves because they love making dens and the other thing they love are creepy crawlies. And Arat made a family-friendly garden in Swansea full of homes for creepy crawlies. Our next Top of the Plots family garden was for Jessica and Peter. Their garden was in very poor shape, and the couple dreamt of a wildlife-friendly space for their two children, which Arit just loved. We're looking for a garden that overall has to be child-friendly, yeah. as currently it isn't. Also, as well, wildlife-friendly yeah. for the children, because it sounds like they're really into bugs oh, and, yeah. and knowing what's going on in nature. So, Arat's incredible design included a pond, a wormery, and a bug hotel. Whilst the landscapers make a start digging out the water feature... Come on, guys, bring the digger in. <laughs> David's first job is to make a wormery. Now, a wormery is quite simply a container in which you've got worms which 
break down organic matter to create a lovely, rich and fertile compost. So I've got these two by twos, which are going to create the framework. And then I've got these six by ones, which are going to create the facade. And I'm going to have a lovely little window in it in which they can watch what's going on, but also a little removable lid. And that's really important as well. But I think it's going to be a lovely little item in the garden that's nice and simple, but it's going to give the children a lot of fun. Whilst David's busy with his wormery, out front, Harry is tackling the creepy crawly hotel. I thought it would be a lovely idea to create a high-rise mini-bug hotel. Now, I'm doing that by using two hanging baskets. And the idea is to create a framework like this, where I'm going to put in some materials that are easily found. So I've got an off-cut piece of hessian here, which is going to go on the bottom of the basket. Like that. And then really, it's just about using different materials. And I've got the coir here that came with the hanging basket. And really, you can use anything, and that's what's so nice. I've got a lovely array here with like straws can go in. I've got some pine cones, got some old bits of clay pot there, some bark. So I've got some moss here, which I think I'm going to scrumple up here to put on the outside. And I'm actually really enjoying doing this, and I think it's a great activity to do if you have children because it's just a lovely way of getting them into the garden. Like the idea then of getting some garden soil and just really allowing that to weigh down the inside. Some the bark, the grass in there. So it's starting to look very cosy in here. And that's that done. So that's half of it. I hope it gets a five star rating. David's now finished his worm hotel and it's been filled with ripped up newspaper, soil, and sand. All it needs now is some guests. You almost need to look at it from this side. You've oh, decided real? it's like a microwave or a TV. Well, no, <laughs> but I was thinking I'd do the worm's eye view looking out. <laughs> and here they are. It's great, isn't it? The kids are going to love it. Right. Hello. Welcome to your oh, new oh. home. It'll be at Spaghetti Junction down there, isn't it? <laughs> Because these guys are brandling worms. They're right. not actually earthworms. OK. Um, so whereas earthworms live in the soil, these guys live in the, kind of the organic layer on the surface, and that's yeah. where they, they break it down, because they're slightly thinner... Yeah, I can ..and see a little that. bit more red. What happens now? What do you do now? Well, we've got to put on today's lunch. <laughs> or what's left of it. <laughs> it was a bit tastier than that. Come we were on. A bit, we were a bit slow in eating that guy, weren't <laughs> we? Nice. Right, at that... Are sure you're going to fancy a bite no, all right. At that... I'm going to leave you to oh, it I'm now. I'm tempted. You yeah. not? See you later. Bye. Ooh. Thanks. See ya. It's looking oh. brilliant. It looks better from yeah, the glass for that side. Bye. Thanks. Now, nah. Right, on it goes. As the lucky worms tuck into their tasty snacks, out front, Harry's Bug Hotel is also open for business. Oh, there you go. That's the Mini Beast Hotel. It's not quite penthouse yet, but we're going to position it at a perfect height for the kids to observe all the creepy crawlies. And David's wormery is also ready to take up residence. I'm going in blind, Harry. See me in. <laughs> you're, you're about there. Oh, there we are. All right, guys, look oh, at hello. that. Are you ready for your vegetable hello, TV? Hello. Oh, my word. Only one channel. And mayonnaise. <laughs> worm world. <laughs> worm world. Right, well, worm, worm world. world. Can we try him? Just to be resting under the table. Pretty cool, that, isn't it? Yeah, I'm loving that. OK, thank Lovely, you, people. Right. The garden is really coming together. And with some frantic final planting, the team have done it. Jessica and Peter's garden wasn't practical for their children, but it's been transformed into this stunning space for the whole family to enjoy. But. What will they make of their special wildlife wonderland? Open your eyes. Well, Whoa. that's insane. Oh, Goodness. my God. But there's going to be bugs that go in there. Look, like if you turn it around, look, they're all going to be in here. It's like a utopia. Oh, it's a big word. I know, it is, isn't it? Do you like the garden? Yeah! <laughs> Our children love gardens because they're a great space to run around, but they also love gardening. And if you want to encourage them, get them growing seeds. Very satisfying and you get good results. So seeds to go for, what you want to try are things that are 
big seeds and that grow quickly. So things like sunflowers, nasturtiums and sweet peas. Now the great thing about nasturtiums is the seeds are really big so children can handle them quickly. The flowers are lovely and bright and also you can eat the flowers. So just pop a little hole into the compost, drop a seed in, cover it over. So it's very straightforward for children to do. Give them a good water. Always a good excuse on a hot day for a water fight. Children love that. Keep your seeds well watered and in seven to 10 days, they'll pop up. Now, the one thing to remember about sweet peas, if you want to get lots and lots of flowers, once the sweet peas have grown up and you've got two or three sets of leaves, pinch out the top because that way you'll get double the amount of stems and you'll get double the amount of lovely, sweetly scented flowers. And also keep picking them. That way you'll get even more flowers all summer long. Our next family garden transformation was for Julie, her daughter Emma and her two grandchildren in Nottinghamshire. The family loved the seaside and had brought an element of it into their garden. It just evolved as we've gone along and, and uh, we've bought a lighthouse and we collect pebbles and shells wherever we go to the seaside. We just, just keep buying things and making the beach. <laughs> So, Charlie's design took inspiration from this, but made it bigger and better. I've really elaborated on the beach theme. Including a water feature and an octopus mosaic. And once she gets her cruise ship shape... I'm running a tight ship, so keep walking, get in that garden, get on with the game. Charlie wastes no time setting the Rich Brothers to work. I would like you to make a mosaic in there of octopus tentacles or even squid tentacles. Oh, I'll go for octopus. You can have squid. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah, yeah love Just that. along the back. So yeah. if she doesn't like it, she can just put some palm pots oh, on it. Oh, she's going to love it, Charlie. Yeah. Well, it'd be so yeah. negative. Guess what? I know you're being artistic, but could you be artistic out of my way? <laughs> <laughs> With their mosaic pattern designed, the boys get to work on building their seaside masterpiece. First off, we've got to lay down a bed of this wet cement, and that's going to kind of act like the canvas. That's what we're going to press the cobbles into. Then we've got to choose the stone. We've got three different types, so we've got three different colours. One's a bit more shiny than the others, isn't it? Do you think Charlie wants a sandcastle instead? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so it's just a matter of choosing it, you know, sketching down the design and then just putting them in. So what I'm putting down now is four spadefuls of sharp sand to one cement. And that's going to really allow the, the cobbles to really get cemented in. Hey! <laughs> and then actually, we're against the clock, because that thing's going to dry pretty fast. So we've got to crack on. Charlie's also carrying the seaside theme through with her planting. So this border here, minimal planting, and I'm picking up the planting that Julie's already got. So she already had some Festuca glaucas randomly through the raised bed. So I'm just putting another one in. If you look at the plants at the seaside, you'll find most of them have a sort of blue-green colour to them. So it sort of protects them from the intense extremes of sun, salt water and wind exposure. With her planting finished, the next job for Charlie is to bring another element of the seaside into the garden. This is my water feature focal point, so it will draw your eye to the corner of my water feature. Come foot cooler. It's a bit of fun, really. It's somewhere where the children can sit and dangle their feet off of if it's really, really hot, or just make some paper boats to float around on the water surface. This piece of driftwood was £40, so it wasn't cheap, but it is beautiful. I've drilled a hole just here, so the water's going to gently tumble out here, but I need to silicon it in position and just leave it for a minute or two. Well, probably about 10 minutes. Charlie is securing one end of the hose pipe to the driftwood with silicon sealant. The other end will be attached to the pump, which is submerged in the pool. Just going to squidge that in a little bit. So I'm going to leave that to just go off. Um, 
So I'm using a solar powered pump and the great thing about solar powered pumps is these days they're way better than they used to be. So you get a panel and you get the pump. So it means you haven't got to run electrics. We pop the panel up on the roof of the garage and then we've got the pump right down in here. And you can see it bubbling away on this lovely sunny day. And once the silicon is dry and the upcycled fountain, the nautical themed water feature is up and running. I think that's lovely. That nice bit of detail on it. Nice sound. Lovely. Yeah. Really pretty. And with the rest of the garden coming together, Harry's putting the finishing touches to the octopus mosaic. It's gone really, really well, hasn't it? Yeah, it's been a lot of fun. I think what's so nice is Charlie's using these same pebbles throughout the whole garden, so there's a sense of unity. A sense of detail. Yeah, and I think it's really nice introducing a bit of art into the garden. Yeah. Isn't and hopefully it'll inspire the kids. Julie and her daughter Emma had a rather boring garden with a gentle nod to the seaside. But now it's been turned into this family friendly, coastal inspired place to relax and enjoy. Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Oh, it's gorgeous, isn't it? It's like an octopus. The boys will be so pleased. Army shipmates, that was a fun garden to work on. <laughs> <laughs> and it's amazing how many things we managed to put in the garden without it looking too crowded. Mm. It meant there was everything for the family. Yeah, and a garden, you know, can sometimes be more than just a tranquil oasis. You know, for these uh, sport-mad kids, kicking footballs is way better than picking flowers. Do you remember those lovely kids? Phoebe and Jamie, yeah. they were sports mad in they Northampton, were. weren't they? They were. I think I've got to say that we slam dunk that garden, guys. Yeah. <laughs> Shame about your basketball play. <laughs> <laughs> Our final top of the plots family garden was for Andy and Louise. Their garden left a lot to be desired, and they dreamt of a space for their two sports mad children, Jamie and Phoebe, to enjoy. Both the kids, Jamie and Phoebe, are both sporty. Jamie from the age of three, started playing a bit of tennis, started fencing, loves basketball, and I think Phoebe is just starting to follow suit. But both kids had mobility issues, which made it difficult for them to access the garden. So the family wanted an outside space that was easy to negotiate and full of fun. Hello. Really excited. <laughs> the boys were triumphant with a garden design jam-packed with activity for the children. Then this whole idea of actually moving the shed really opened up this space and it means it's going to create this lovely little basketball court. Shall I just usher you guys through it? But the job of moving a basketball hoop filled with water is a bit of a dampener. Charlie, you just need to lift your end up. There we are. That's it, that's it, that's it. Oh, <laughs> the shortcut prevails. I mean, do you want to know what's so funny about that? Is it doesn't look like I'm wet, but it went down literally straight down into my pants. Oh! <laughs> Stop complaining. But that's made my time. Slightly in my mouth and completely down my pants. <laughs> that was worth it. That will teach him for not lifting. I know. Oh, I'll have to go lie in the sun, I think. With the work of clearing the space well underway, the garden shed's been moved to make way for the basketball court. All right, just moving. Well, as far down as we can, feeling comfortable. Mind your legs. Harry's making sure the area is level before David rolls out the underlay for the court. Now, we did to and fro between what material we were going to use as the basketball court surface, and we didn't want to use anything that was generally used in a garden. We wanted it to stand out, and we wanted it to signify a bit of fun. So, actually, We've, we're using these multi-sport interlocking tiles. They look fantastic. Really, really cool. Nice, vibrant blue. It's brilliant. Even if they're not using it for basketball, it's perfect for the wheelchair. These pro sports tiles are designed to lock into each other and hold to the matting, so they'll be super secure and safe. The tiles are non-slip and cost around £40 each. These multi-sport tiles are going down really easily. It's interlocking mechanism. 
makes it super fast and really effective. As the name suggests, the tiles are good for all kinds of sports and can even be used in playgrounds. That is clever, that is. Louise and Andy's son, Jamie, loves archery and the new lawn area is a perfect spot for shooting practice. So the team is making a target for him. Uh, this whole staff board, saw it up into length, screw it together and then I'll go around with the jigsaw and make it into the target. Nathan's using a thick hemp rope and once coiled, he screws it firmly to the board. This is looking gorgeous. It's nice in the garden now, I think. A uh, bit of fun, eh? Now all it needs is a bullseye. The garden's almost there, but David's central sporty feature is missing one essential element. Now, no basketball court is quite finished until it has the markings on it. So all I'm doing now is I'm just using a centre point, piece of string, just creating two semicircles. One here at the end, which is the shooting zone, and the other then at the front then below the net. And I think it's just going to finish it off. It's going to look fantastic. Just like driving between the lines. Oh, I think it's turned out right. And with that, the team is done. Andy and Louise's garden just wasn't ticking the right boxes. But now it's been transformed into a family-friendly space for everybody to enjoy. In three, two, one, open your eyes. Oh, wow. <laughs> I am genuinely absolutely speechless. Yeah, good. <laughs> oh, my wow. gosh. Where do you want to go, Jamie? Because um, you've been bursting, yeah. I know. In there. Yeah, good. <laughs> Let's go. I, I feel that we can relax in it now, because it was always we had to help them out all the time, whereas actually they can yeah. go around almost the entire garden now. It's absolutely perfect. Yeah. Are you happy with the garden? Yeah. Yeah, come on. <laughs> <laughs> I want it that first thing, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, no. Oh, amazing. I'm sure they're going to use it loads. Yeah, definitely. It's wonderful to see, isn't it? And everyone, old, young and in-between, should be out enjoying their garden. Yeah, I think with people's busy lives, working with their kids, it's quite easy to overlook their outdoor space. Yeah, and it shows you, you know, you can make a garden somewhere for the children to play without it being just a playground. Yeah, absolutely. Well, we hope you enjoyed a look back at some of our favourite family gardens. And see you next time for some more Top of the Plots.